Hey guys, so today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is the latest film by Blitz Bazawuli. He's the chap who co-directed Beyonce's Black is King. His latest film is an adaptation of the Broadway stage musical The Color Purple, which itself was an adaptation of the novel by Alice Walker. Most people have probably at least heard of The Color Purple. I know I had. I knew it because I was aware that the novel had previously been adapted by Steven Spielberg in 1985, and it was nominated for like... 11 Oscars and one zero. In fact, it's one of the biggest losers at the Academy Awards ever. But as a kid who was a big fan of Whoopi Goldberg, I loved like Sister Act and Ghost growing up, I was aware that this was the role that she got her first Oscar nomination for, for playing the role of Seeley. Just for the record, I still haven't seen the Steven Spielberg film or the Broadway musical for that matter, or read the novel for that matter. So I went into this film not knowing anything about the plot or how it would compare to previous iterations. I was a blank slate going into this movie. But I was keen to see this film because the film was getting some early Oscar buzz after the first reactions came in. In fact, I would say the first reactions to this film seemed very rapturous. A lot of people were saying that The Color Purple was gonna be a best picture contender and that the audience were like erupting into applause like after certain musical numbers while they were watching this film. And with those kinds of enthusiastic reactions, I was going into this film expecting greatness. But in all honesty, I just thought this movie was fine. Nothing exceptional. I do think it was a little bit overhyped by those that saw it first. For the most, I did enjoy this movie, but I don't think it reached those expectations that were set. The Color Purple is set in early 1900s Georgia and tells the story of a young black woman called Celie, played in this film by Fantasia Barino, and we watch her struggles with an abusive father, teenage pregnancy, and an abusive marriage to Mr., played in this film by Coleman Domingo. And as Celie matures, she meets other inspiring women like the blues singer Shug Avery, played by by Taraji B. Henson, and the feisty Sophia, played by Danielle Brooks, who helps Seely come into her own. It's essentially a story about a woman finding a voice as well as the power of sisterhood. Again, this iteration of The Color Bevel is my first introduction to the story, so I've got nothing else to compare it to. But with this version of The Color Purple, I would say that the acting in this is on fire, but the rest of the movie just feels a little bit average. Don't get me wrong, it's obvious that the director Blitz Bazawuli made this film with a lot of passion. You can see it in the execution. I'm just not sure that adapting this particular stage musical works entirely as a movie. I hate to say it, but there are times where it does feel a bit stagey. There are some fun, uplifting, and creative musical sequences. Like Shug Avery's Push the Button number was dazzling. And there's another musical number which is set on a giant revolving vinyl record player, which I'm sure would look very cool on a stage. Not quite sure it works in this movie, but I did think it was creative. But the ladies who are performing these songs are wonderful. Fantasia Barino is divine as Seely, beautifully conveying her growth, you know, starting off as meek and vulnerable, but slowly blossoming into independent and empowered. Taraji P. Henson gives a firecracker of a performance as Shug Avery. She just has that crackling charisma that's so easy to be seduced by. But it is Danielle Brooks, the sole Oscar nominee for The Color Purple, who steals this film. From the moment she stomps onto the screen, she has a magnetic presence and she commands your attention as Sophia. I couldn't help but think, wow, she is a star. As Sophia, she is quick with a comeback and she delivers a belter of a song called Hell No. It didn't happen in my screening, but if I had to take a guess as to where Audiences might have applauded like midway through the film. I would have thought it would probably be after her version of Hell No. Like there's a very like rousing and empowering song and she crushed it. In another year, if she wasn't competing against Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers, I could see Danielle Brooks easily taking away the Best Supporting Actress Oscar, but I'm still so happy she got the nomination. It's very much deserved. Also, Coleman Domingo gives another superb performance as the controlling husband of Seely, Mr. Domingo has such incredible range as an actor because he can do sweet and cuddly, but he can also be terrifying when he needs to. And this is a performance which is very much the latter. I'm so happy that Coleman Domingo has like exploded now with his first Oscar nomination for Rustin. Yeah, he is a big deal. And I'm glad like people are finally starting to wake up and celebrate um, the awesomeness of Coleman Domingo. So yeah, I have no beef with any of the performances in this film. I think everybody shines, but the movie the movie overall does have some issues. For one, the pacing is a little bit jarring. Like you've got Sophia singing about how excited she is to get married in one scene and then in the literal very next scene she's having some pretty heavy marital issues and it's just a very big tonal jump to go from one scene to the very next. And then later on one character, I won't say who, 
goes to jail for six years, but six years in this film is about two minutes of screen time. It's another crazy time jump, which I can see working on the stage, but for a movie, it does feel jarring. So yeah, the editing of this film is quite rapid and the flow of time doesn't feel very smooth. I also wasn't a big fan of the cinematography. This film looks very flat and uninspired. Like, don't get me wrong, it's competently shot, but nothing about it really pops. And this is a musical. Nothing really leapt off the screen for me. I will say I did quite like the costume design and the sets in this film. I am a little surprised they haven't gotten any love like from the guilds this award season. But yeah, honestly, the fact that I only got one Oscar nomination for Daniel Brooks doesn't surprise me all that much. I do think the best attribute of this film is the performances. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch it again? The Color Purple isn't one of those films where I feel the need to purchase it and add it to my collection, but I can see it being one of those films where I will want to rewatch it someday for the performances, but it will be a while, probably be like five or 10 years before I get the urge to want to rewatch The Color Purple. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? Again, I haven't read the book or seen the Steven Spielberg movie or seen the Broadway musical for that matter. So I can't tell you how it compares to those iterations or if it's even a faithful adaptation, but I would recommend this film if you're a fan of musicals or if you're a fan of any of the cast in this film because everyone is fantastic. But besides from the great performances, I did leave this film feeling like it could have been so much better. But I should say this, there is a fair amount of domestic abuse portrayed in this film. That's both both verbal and physical. There's a lot of slaps in this movie, so if that's something you're easily triggered by, just approach the film with caution. And third question, what score to give it out of 10? The Color Purple was good enough, but not great. Again, the movie is bolstered up by an incredible cast, but it did leave me feeling a little bit shortchanged. So I'm gonna give The Color Purple a score of six out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. Love to hear from you. Have you seen this movie? Um, did you enjoy it? How does it compare to the, the Broadway musical or Steven Spielberg's movie? Whatever you have to say about this film, do let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed this video, help me out with a little thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Kierfield and I'll see you next time.